3.5. I think it was a font tag exploit. Um, so it's going to be, you know, you're going to make sure you're out of date with that type of stuff. That's why I don't necessarily go the browser exploit route. I mean, the chances are the person's going to be patched, right? Okay. Okay, so that's that kind of a good walk in that one. But, um, you know, chances are that the majority of them are going to be patched. Say Internet Explorer is generally going to be patched. When you get that pop up saying, hey, you should probably patch your system, we're going to patch it, right? Um, so, why do that when you can do the Java Apple method? You know, the Java Apple method isn't a bug as far as Sun is concerned. You know, it's not a flaw. So, I mean, someone gets this pop up and says, hey, are you going to trust Google? Well, of course I'm going to trust Google. So, I'm going to run it. Uh, and I guarantee you it works. I, I did a survey at last uh, at Nauticon, and four people raised their hand about using the Java applet. And I said, what was your success rate? They said 100%. Uh, Mick Douglas from Paul.com said, you know, basically I, I got told I can't even use that anymore because I'm just rubbing it in. So, you know, <laughs> you're going to have 100% success rate with it pretty much, unless it's us, right? We're not going to collect any of a run a Java applet from Google. So I would. So let's go to um, the Metasploit browser attack vector within set. Same exact step. We're going to go through the website attack, right? We're going to go ahead and we're going to select the Metasploit browser attack. And we're going to clone Gmail. Surprise, surprise. Now, in this instance, what it and what Seth's doing in all these attack vectors is it's grabbing a site similar to like a WGAT or something like that, right? And it goes ahead and it automatically rewrites the site for you. So it injects the Java applet into the website itself, or it rewrites um, the Metasploit exploit into the file itself. So it does it automatically for you. Um, here it has the list of the built-in exploits that set uses. These are the most reliable ones that I'm able to find. As soon as you know an SVN update comes up for a new exploit, it's generally in set within an hour or so. Um, so it's usually pretty fast. But again, we'll go ahead and use the, um, the Aurora attack. And we'll, we'll go the same route. We'll go interpreter. So it is now uh, 
um, obfuscated heavily so that antivirus doesn't pick it up. So spear phishing. Spear phishing attack vector is fairly straightforward, as you can probably anticipate. And that's option one, so we'll go ahead and select it. We're going to perform a mass email attack. Now, one thing I want to show you that is, is set comes built in with different templates. So templates that you can use in the social engineering aspect. So if there's something that you can foresee yourself using multiple times, you can create your own template. So you know you select the read and you know name the author. So name cheese. Um, and you'll say, hey, do check this out. And we'll control C when we're done. Now that specific um, template would now be saved within Seth. So every time you open it up, you'll always have that template in there. Um, I actually closed close it up without finishing the body, so I messed up there. But, um, so we're going to perform a mass email attack. And the mass email attacks use file format bugs. And what file format bugs are, it's very similar to, to what you saw with Elliot. Instead of it being remote, it's local on your system, right? So when they open up a PDF, or they open up a Word document, or they open up something, um, it automatically compromises their computer depending on if they're vulnerable to that specific attack. Uh, one thing I will mention is that the Adobe PDF Embedded EXE is probably your most reliable method of attack. Uh, reason being is because um, it's not an exploit. Again, it's not crit criticized as an exploit. So when they go to open up the PDF, there's an executable actually inside the contents of that document. Uh, so as soon as they open it, it executes the PDF and then they're compromised. So it kind of flaws. So we'll just go ahead and do the JPEG um, exploit, Adobe exploit. It's one of the most reliable ones for older versions. Um, we're going to select the interpreter over TCP. Have connect back to us at 443. The guy's in my office handy, by the way, with this tool. <laughs> Never trust him anything. So this menu should look a little bit familiar. We're going to email a single email address. We're going to use a predefined template, or you can use a one-time template that you just don't want to use again. So we've got a couple of ones in here. you got baby picks, strange internet usage from your computer, Dan Brown's you know, demons, you know, computer issues, dad's report. We'll just do computer issue, and I'm going to send this to myself. I use Gmail. So we got it. We know that there's a uh, PDF here. Now, one thing to note too, if you view it, it's not going to hurt your computer because it's all hosted by Google. If you download it and execute, 